how's it going? If you've read any productivity blogs or watched any videos over the last couple of years, you're probably already aware of the importance of having an effective weekly plan, whether or not you implement one or not. And in this world that we live in at the moment that constantly seems to demand our attention with Netflix or Instagram or even um, YouTube, I think that old saying of if you don't prioritize your time, someone else will, just seems even more relevant than ever. So if recently you seem to be finding that time is slipping through your fingers, stick around and I'm going to show you through a method that I've developed that blends time boxing and OKRs, two really effective prioritization methods to I think allow you to really organize your time in the best way that suits. In this video, first we're going to be talking about the two methods that make up this approach, that's time boxing and OKRs. Then we're going to just quickly discuss how even though both of these methods are great, they do have their disadvantages and by combining them together we can actually get a really slick system that works for us. Then I'm going to talk you through a Notion template that I've created and you can follow along using Notion or even try out your own way using Google Sheets or just a journal. So let's talk about time boxing. You might already be familiar with this technique. I think it was popularized by Cal Newport in his book, Deep Work. If you haven't heard of this guy, uh, I'd recommend checking him out. He's an absolute beast when it comes to productivity. He's a computer science professor, I believe, but also spends a lot of time coding and writing. I think he wrote three or five different books. So definitely someone that you want to listen to when it comes to productivity. The method of time boxing is actually really simple. All it involves is setting out first things first when it comes to your day. So what you want to do is sit down each morning and think, what do I need to get done today? And then set out hour to two hour blocks of deep work where you can only focus on those different tasks. I find it's really helpful to help eliminate distraction and if you have breaks dispersed between the different blocks of deep work, it can actually lead to a really productive day. While time boxing is an incredibly effective method to manage time, I don't think that on its own it's enough because it doesn't necessarily give you the context about what you should be focusing on in the day and that's where the OKRs come in. OKRs or Objectives and Key Results is a concept that was pioneered by John Doerr in his book Measure What Matters. He literally wrote the book on OKRs. This was then popularized by Google who cite it as one of the reasons as to why their teams are so high performing. Simply put, OKRs consists of having a few high level objectives and then four or five key results that feed into these objectives. We're actually gonna go through an example of creating OKRs, which is gonna make it a bit clearer as to how to set these up for yourself, whether that's for your own business or a company that you work for, or even just personal OKRs, which we're gonna be using. The issue with OKRs that I'm sure most people can attest to if they've worked in a company that's tried to utilize them, is that often you'll set them and then completely forget about them for three months. Um, so that when it comes around to reviewing them finally, you're sort of doing a mad scramble trying to get the data of the key results and trying to show how you've worked on them. This is obviously not how OKRs are meant to work. They're meant to be something that you always keep in the forefront of your mind. So we've got time boxing, great for working distraction free for an extended period of time, great for setting out uh, your day into blocks of deep work, but perhaps lacking in a bit of direction as to what the actual work you should be doing. And then we have OKRs, a great way to set the work that you should be doing in a quarter, but perhaps not a great way to actually break that down into small tasks. So as you probably guessed, what we're now going to do is combine these approaches together so that we have time boxing, which is actually linked to OKRs. And now I'm going to show you how to do that. What you're going to want to do is open up the OKR template that I've attached in the description. 
and then just create three or four of your own OKRs. So I'm going to set my first objective, which is actually going to be to improve my physical health. Uh, recently with the coronavirus lockdown, um, I've not been uh, the healthiest, not been having access to the gym and stuff. So that's something that over the next few months I'd really like to improve on. Now, that's obviously quite a wishy-washy objective in itself. And that's why we now break this down into key results. So let's think about this. What would actually having good physical health mean to me? Well, firstly, I'd actually really like to be able to run uh, 10 kilometers. I haven't done that for a while, so that would be a great objective for me to have. Um, the next one, as I mentioned, I used to be sort of quite into weightlifting, but not something that I've been doing recently. So I'm gonna put a weightlifting objective in there, which for me is gonna to be to, um, let's see, bench press 115 kilograms. And finally, I want one about mobility. So I've been getting into yoga a bit, still haven't mastered the downward dog, the most fundamental of all poses. So if I can hold a downward dog for five minutes, uh, I think that for me is gonna be a, a real win. So I'm gonna put that one in there as well. You have access to putting in your sort of current uh, state of where you are and a target. And then the framework is actually gonna work out sort of percentage wise where you are and if you're on track to sort of reaching that target and this can become really useful so throughout the months you can update your OKRs and just see roughly where you, where you are and if you need to put in any more work together. So now I'm just going to fill in all my other OKRs and uh, I'll speed this video up a bit so you can see that. So now I have all my OKRs and really what this should be for you is over the next three months, what are the most important things that you want to be focusing on? So for me, this is about improving my physical health, uh, building um, an audience and also some of the side projects that I'm working on as well. For you, it's obviously going to be completely different, but yeah, just that's just the most important thing of OKRs that they should be focused on what it really is vital for you to achieve over the next few months. Now we have these OKRs listed out separately, the next thing that we need to do if you're using Notion is to compile them into a single table. We need to do this because when we go into the time boxing later on, we're actually going to set up a relational database. And the way that relational databases work in Notion is that you actually can only link to a single database from another database. So now we've got a full table of OKRs. The next step is going to be to open up our weekly planner, which again, I've linked in the description below. So when you open up your planning view, the first thing that you're actually gonna to wanna to do is now link this in with your OKRs using Notion's relational database feature. Click into OKR here and then go to relation, advanced, and then what I need to do is select the database that I want to use. I called mine all OKRs, so that should appear just here. Now that I've created a relation, those two databases are gonna be synced, so I'm gonna be able to pull through the OKRs into the weekly planner. How I usually like to use this is on a Sunday evening, I'll just pick out a few of the key results that I want to work on for the following week. And then I'll build tasks around that from the bottom up to help me go and achieve those key results. So let's look at a couple of examples. Say I want to pick that I want to run 10 kilometers. Well, pretty self-explanatory, probably the best way for me to do that is to run some sort of distance. So I'm going to create a task, which is to run a five kilometer race. Then I'm going to just assign quickly how long I think it's going to take me to do that, which is going to become important when we start to plan out our week a little bit later. Another example might be that I want to get 100 YouTube subscribers. Why not? So if I want to achieve this, I mean, I could post videos, but maybe another way might be for me to uh, complete a course on how to best promote your YouTube channel. So I'm just going to put that in. 
I'm going to go and fill in the rest of these now. Uh, if you're working along, do the same. Otherwise, um, yeah, it shouldn't take too long. I'm just going to skip it through quick. So now in the planning view, you have your full list of tasks that you want to do in the week. The next thing we're going to do is skip to the weekly view and then start deciding on what day we're going to do so. Uh, in the weekly view now, I've got all of these tasks uh, that I've just set up and I can decide which day they're going to go into. If you can't see them, just make sure that on the filter you've got the correct filter selected and that should really help you out. I'm going to go ahead now and just uh, drag and drop these in. Now I have all of my tasks planned out that I want to do in a certain day. I can move these around with flexible, like don't get too uh, anal about the whole thing. If you want to move something from one day to another, that's actually how time boxing is meant to be used. I find now that I've got this sort of weekly structure in place, the next step of putting this into a daily plan is just really simple. So now what I would do is say Monday's coming around, I would block out when I wanted to run the 6K, when I'd want to go to the gym, and when I'd want to do my YouTube course, and then any other things that might pop up in the day, I would just put them in between the blocks of time that I've already set out for those. I still find that writing stuff out manually at the beginning of the day is pretty helpful. I wouldn't necessarily do everything in a digital format. I would say this approach can seem at first, it did to me when I started using it, a little bit limiting, um, almost like it's too structured and there's too much in place to make sure this is what you have to be doing this time, this is what you have to be doing this time. Actually from using it, what I've sort of found is it's become really the opposite. It's quite freeing to know that these are actually the things that I care about and this is what I'm gonna focus on in the week because there's nothing worse than getting to the end of the week and feeling like you've been really busy, that you've done loads of stuff actually know the stuff that you've been doing has been something that's been beneficial to you so that's why i highly recommend at least trying out this approach or some way of um combining a sort of high level idea of really what you want to be getting out of life with a more granular weekly plan thanks a lot for joining and see you next time